you guys want a Highline rigging example on the Lost Aerospire, check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and this is Kyle Lovett. And we are going to climb the Lost Aerospire today to set up three high lines with Freddy Kuna and Lucas Ermler. It's going to be pretty fun. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit on how to do it, not 100% of it, but to make sure your trip is successful. Ow! You can see here that I am rappelling off of the tree back there. But there are bolts right there, a little sketchy to get to, but you only need one 70 meter rope to get to the notch if you use those bolts. We are not worried about the length of, we have lots of ropes with us because we're going to recycle them for some of our Highline backups. So uh, I'm going to rappel past a knot, we have two ropes tied together, and I'm going to go down to the notch. Okay, so I've rappelled about 50 feet down here, and I'm standing on the notch. This is not a spot I can pass the knot. Um, I'm going to do that further down. So you got two flakes here that look like kind of a butt crack. And then you have Dean's bolt right there. And then we put some number threes and number four cams in this crack. And this is what it looks like from the flake looking up. Okay, I am at the knot. I am not very far, get it, from the ledge, the notch down there. So that's why using those bolts and a 70 meter is perfect. Now, I did not stop my, um, my rappel in the knot because then it just kind of gets stuck. But which basically, it's not rocket science to do this. You um, transfer your weight onto an ascender. Um, this is my daisy, which is gonna hold my weight in a second. And to take my weight off the grigri, I'm gonna use my aider. Once my weight's on this guy, I can move my grigri. And then I try to transfer my weight from um, that system back to my grigri. Here is a good look at the notch. That is an ascender that he can pull up to use for a second ascender, as that helps a lot. My rope, I am staying clipped in to the end of the rope as I go down this notch. It's a stair steps, a little loose, steep, uh, steep step left there. While Kyle passes his knot trying to get the weight off of his daisy back onto the grigri, um, I was able to flake uh, my entire rope here and I already have it clipped into here for me to start climbing. I am tied into it. First step's a doozy. It's just that piton there and then your next move is uh, the shadow kind of sucks for you but the second piton and then a third piton I think then a super awesome bolt and then um, kind of a free climb to a second bolt free climb to the ledge. I'm halfway up the first pitch so two bolts right there. There's three bolts total on that section. In two sections, you have to free climb. There was only two pitons down there. And then you get up to this guy, uh, which I have my I clipped in, and take this off. And then I'm gonna go up here. It's just a number two, number three, and you shuffle them. Then number three, number four, and you shuffle them. Number four, number five. And then that's the top of the first pitch. So Kyle just got up on our ledge. This is belay the middle, yeah, top pitch one, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, I'm heading to that bolt as that's my first piece before I get to go do a C2. How are you feeling, Kyle? Alive. Alive. It's an okay view. Just okay. And you can see the waterfall from here, even though there's not a lot of water. Hi, Kyle. I'm on that bolt. It's a spinner, but it's a good one. Anyways, so um, this is uh, kind of your first move if that doesn't have tat on it. So uh, that looks like a fresh piece that's gonna be really nice to, to use right now. Um, but I'm gonna experiment with what goes in here and right above it. After that, it's just two orange TCUs and then the bolt. In case you're wondering what the view looks like when you're uh, working this crux, um, pretty nice but it's airy so uh, I don't really want to lose my phone but the shot's just too beautiful okay I'm at the bolt after the crux and then I have a hook which is pretty easy and then some fixed gear and then I just continue up the easy crack. but I used in the crux I kept track um, I didn't need all these pieces but I wanted to see what would fit um, 
I'm sure you could probably fit more different things in here, but man, if you brought this, you would have double what you need. Um, sometimes it'd be nice to have two orange TCUs, but like, I mean, you don't use them for anything else, they suck. Um, but they fit in the Pitons cars really well. So all these alien hybrids and the orange TCU is what I use for this crack. So after the hook move, you got some sketchy uh, tat like that, wire tat. So and then you got a bolt, and then more tat, and then a bolt, and then uh, and then you're on good old rusty pitons a few times. That one's halfway sticking out. A .75 Camelot, a green one, C4s, uh, fit in this crack periodically if you want to back up the pitons. Um, then you free climb to a bolt up there, and it's just a bolt ladder after that. There's my Slack family filming me, filming them, filming me, filming them. This is the bolt ladder after that dihedral crack. And this is about three bolts up the bolt ladder. Okay, that last part of free climbing is not too bad. I like to leave my aider down there and just step out of it. Of course, you can't have your daisies on there when you do it. Um, I put a super eight on two bolts for, for Kyle to come up and then I have more or less his backup, but my long personal anchor. This way I can walk around freely all over the Los Cerro Spire. Now there's a lot of shit up here. I just cleaned up a bunch of old cordelettes for people who repelled. There are two, four, six, eight bolts that Dean Potter put in here for his massive winch system when he did his Amsteel walking. And these are half inch bolts. We uh, can put hangers on them, but many times people steal the hangers. So um, it's kind of been the culture around here to remove them, but these are all pretty good bolts. Um, they are eventually, I believe, gonna get removed and have three glue-ins here for the 170 foot high line. And we're gonna have three glue-ins eventually for the 110. But these were the bolts originally for the 110 because he had to have so much working room when he did his projects. So some of the more useless bolts here are two holes up here. I'm not quite sure what they're for. They're pretty big. Um, however they were removed, I can't tell. But this right here is a quarter inch old rusty bolt. Probably put here when it was first climbed. And there are three of them. Now the bolts up here are three eighths inch bolts and they are bimetallic corroding. Uh, this is not stainless and this is. Um, so this metal is corroding. Uh, looks like that washer has some rust. So there are four of those bolts and then this random glue-in right here. This is a shitty glue-in. Uh, it looks like someone tried to remove it and did a terrible job. This does not move right now. So um, it's something that's usable, but it definitely is pretty crappy to have all this junk up here. How not to jug with a backpack. Not to jug. Jugging with a backpack sucks. Thank you for doing it. Okay, this is the rack we use now that we're both up here. I have eight of these that I used. I have one somewhere else. This is what I used on the second half of the second pitch. Um, after that, that first bolt that makes you feel better after the crux. The crux I've already showed you is these cams right here all fit in there. You don't need all of them. This one's really nice and this one's really, really nice. But uh, some of these smaller ones, you may really need them if that uh, fixed piece isn't there. And this is all I needed for the first pitch because of that off width section. That's, you don't need anything else. And that is my entire wreck for the Lost Arrow. So uh, we have delegated the rigging of these anchors to the German crew. And the American crew. And the American crew has the spire tip.
and the Kim and Zoli crew have the camera responsibilities. So we used four of the furthest right bolts um, so it didn't stick it out too far. Just a BFK, six mil quick links. I did not tighten the nuts on these until I knew exactly what direction they needed to be pulled. I backed my tail off to this other bolt and of course kept the tails from slipping by doing that. Um, it's really windy between noon-ish and about 6 or 7 p.m. When this wall is hot over here, there's usually a lot of wind. How you doing? I finally feel safe now that I'm on a high line and off the pinnacle Man, I'm of gonna the fix fucking that line Los Fire. I feel here. way safer out here than I do on there. Okay, Kyle's taping the line because we use our rappel rope from the tree as our backup because we use the tail of the 170 um, for the webbing. However, we forgot to put on the leash. So we had to put the leash on the rope over here. He's got to slide over there. We got to detention and put it on. It's a pain in the ass. Never forget your leash. So Freedy seems to have tons of energy. It is getting dark. Um, so we have one, two, and three bolts that we BFK'd. Uh, we did use a strand since we had so much rope here uh, as a backup. It's not the world's best, but whatever. Over here, we have um, pure shackle to pure lock. And uh, we Velcroed a little bit, just in case. That's our tagline. And we tied off our tails, kind of hard to see, so it won't slip. And then we um, tie it off to a, a bolt, just, just in case something happens over there. The 110, we used these three bolts. And uh, we just used the excess to pad it for right now. We're going to uh, detail it tomorrow, um, but we're going to use probably something else to pad it so we can take this stuff and back it up to maybe the bolts behind me or something like that. We, I think, really utilized everything. Something that's really important when you're up here, besides not walking backwards when you film, is having um, a way to move around and a way to stay organized. So this right here is a sling girth hitch to the glue-in. This is a long personal anchor. I'm also attached to the personal anchor, which is right there. It allows me to move around a lot. This sling we clipped for his backpack, a couple beaners. Uh, when we need to tension, we'll snatch it. Um, and a couple free beaners, just so we have stuff to clip our personal shit. I am gonna use this tomorrow to clean some garbage off the spire. Uh, we wanna leave this place nicer than we found it. And maybe rappel in to get some cool photos depending on the goal. But uh, yeah, it's pretty organized up here. Usually there's a lot of crap right there. We removed it all for this project and we'll put it all back in a nicer way. Uh, we did not really end up using these uh, three bolts over here, um, but this is a nice, it's, it's really nice to have shit to clip to. It is messy up here, but I, I really kind of do like having this many bolts. So let me show you about the anchors here on the 110 side. So this is the 110 high line, and to get down there are these two bolts. I'm standing on the ledge everyone stands on to take photos. This is where all the photos get taken. Now something did a little different here is we have this guy. Um, I just kind of keep it tucked into this notch. And this way when you down climb, uh, this super easy thing down to this ledge that uh, you can stay safe while setting up your rappel. Um, and then the bolts are about 40, let's see if I can safely do this, about 40 feet down there. So here are the bolts for the 110 anchor. All these extra bolts are for when uh, Dean did his project. There's one there, one there, and one there. Put a lot of force on his stuff. Uh, these are the bolts I think he broke. Um, I think. So uh, that's why he installed so many. But, so there's four hangers here. Uh, people don't generally steal these. And uh, we have to adjust our BFK a little, just because you can see here it's putting the pressure on the top one. Um, I, this would probably be better as an equalized anchor with whoopies, um, because uh, this gets pushed down like this. But you can see here it's just about a 40 foot rappel. And I'm going to carefully turn around. And that's what it looks like from this angle. 
and looking down that's what that looks like okay so I just crossed the 170 a little out of breath there's a uh, four glue and bolts nicely placed um, I'm at the end of the orange rope this 60 meter rope is long enough to reach down here if you use an anchor at the tree and don't use the rope as the anchor around the tree. Anyways, we had to pat it a little to, oh my god, to go around that, or it rubs that rock there, but we pretty much would be fk it again. And uh, this side has stolen loops. Um, and then we have uh, tubular backup. So we have a paint tube with tubular backup. This is up and sorry for shaking. Sorry for shaking. This is down. So down has down has a really great view. But if you just look to the left when you're walking towards this is actually not much exposure. But it's really pretty up here. Okay, now for the flake anchor for the 55 or 57 foot line, however technical you want to be. So, as you can see down here, we have a number four cam and a number three Dean's bolt and uh, a number three back there and how we do it is we make sure like the stem or the carabiner aren't going around the corner and that the uh, sling that we use is and we just put a little velcro right there these are mammut slings uh, they're built like span sets where it just goes round and round and round um, with a abrasion resistant very abrasion resistant uh, outside sheath. And that is really nice to use for this. These are two separate slings and we manually equalized them by putting the cams deeper into the crack, um, moving them around. So uh, then the tails, then the, uh, this rappel rope uh, that's connected to the tree is connected to our sewing loop right there. Now we do have a few aluminum beaners here. Um, it's technically strong enough it's just as strong as this hanger the problem with aluminum is that the cyclic loading the cycles of it being pulled 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 weaken aluminum whereas steel can just take a beating so um, it's not ideal to be using aluminum and in a perfect world you would retire all these carabiners after a project like this I am sitting on the notch this is what it looks like looking straight up Kim is rappelling down to do some highlighting. So this is the anchor for the repel to get to the 170 glue ends. I did two of these for redundancy and then bunny eared that, but there was a lot of ways to skin that cat. If I took that rope and wrapped it around the tree, it, it might, might reach. But it's not directly above the repel. So you gotta walk all the way over here, hang on to this. And you can see there's this one rusty bolt that has some serious bimetallic con corrosion going on there where the bolt is stainless and the hanger is zinc plated. Anyways, that's a clove hitch. You can do that however you want. But this is directly above the bolts and you saw how, how much rope was left over. And looking back, that is where the tree is in relation to this really cool rock. Okay, we are officially de-rigged. Right here, I have two slings that um, I found up here. We removed for high lines, but they're actually in good shape. So I put them back. I actually uh, equalized two bolts for each one. So I'm on four bolts when I repel and on two beaners. It's pretty bummer. It was really nice to have soft releases on everything. 3D took the 170 bolts, and Lucas helped me over here until he did uh, the flake, and then Kyle took care of the 110 anchor right there. So we just soft released everything to everyone, and then Lucas slid over and pulled over all the webbing, so I just have to repel now. So this rope is attached to the tree, and what I do in order to escape the spire is tie a figure eight right there and attach it to myself. And then I take all this tail that I have, and I use it through this master point and repel the loose side with the grigri. The lower I go, the closer I get to the wall. And then I just pull my tail through like a normal repel.
Now I have climbers coming up here. They're climbing the spire direct and I'm going to leave a rope for them so they can uh, be attached to the, the wall over there. So um, I, what I'm just going to do in this case is leave my fixed line there, rappel and jug. If you try to make this tight, sorry, I'm really scared holding this. Um, if I try to make this tight and slide over, my rappel device won't go through it. It's really hard. So the looser this is, the easier it will be. Good job, Freddy. Well, thanks for watching. It's a little tedious to go over all the little beta for the Lost Arrow Spire, but if you're going to climb it, this will make your trip a little bit easier. Now, you do need to know how to highline and aid climb and all that stuff, but this should hopefully help you if you're trying to come out here and you want to pack light. But this stuff has moments where it's actually pretty dangerous, so therefore, you shouldn't highline.